The druid in vanilla World of Warcraft is the class that has the ability to do it all. Do you want a healer? They can heal. Do you need a tank? Well, they can do that too. And if you are in need of a DPS, Feral with enough effort can be quite good and, uh, Moonkin's a thing, I guess. Whilst Druid had this diverse class fantasy as the shapeshifter shifting to meet their party's needs, it often turned out in reality that they struggled to be good enough at one thing to really see a lot of play. This became very noticeable during the re-release of Classic in 2019, where unfortunately for our nature-loving druids, it was not uncommon to see one or two of them in a 40-player raiding group. On top of that, they were almost surely healing, as that was seen as their most viable role. Oh, and you couldn't use heal over time effects either, because there was a buff cap, and with players stacking well buffs and consumables, a rejuvenation could push a well buff off of somebody's buff list, which would, more often than not, lead to a very unhappy warrior. And heal over time effects of the same rank don't stack anyway, so... yeah. You existed, buffed Mark of the Wild on the raid, cast Healing Touch and pressed Fairy Fire so your raid's two dozen warriors could delete the enemy 0.1 seconds faster. Though in Season of Discovery, I'm very much hoping that Druids get some help and that we can see this class represented a lot more. Druids currently have 12 known runes across three slots, those being their chest, legs and gloves. Each rune does lean somewhat towards a niche playstyle for the Druid, but these choices are not locked behind any specialization choice. You can mix and match them as you please. Let's make a start on the runes that can be applied to your chest. First up, Fury of Storm Rage. Your wrath is free and has a chance to make your next healing touch instant. Well, Moonkins, there you go. Can't have mana problems if you don't have mana costs, can you? This talent was actually from Cataclysm and is found in the Restoration Tree during that expansion. In Kata, when healers have downtime, there is more of an expectation to start DPSing, and many healer trees feature something akin to this. So it's an interesting solution to Moonkin's mana bar problems in vanilla. You also have the option to pop out of Moonkin form, do an instant healing touch, and then go back into form. That's only going to use about a third of your mana on a good day, right? Those druid spells are still expensive. Also, remember Wrath is nature damage. And if you play Boomy in vanilla or played with one, you'll know they only ever cast Starfire, which dealt arcane damage. There were two reasons for that. One was just the mana efficiency side of things. They could keep casting for longer, which is obviously not a problem anymore. And the second reason was neither Curse of Elements or Shadows from Warlocks reduces enemies' nature resistance or increases nature damage taken. Kind of ironic, Curse of Elements doesn't consider nature an element, but there you go, vanilla. Could new curses be added at some point that reduces nature and holy resistances or damage taken? After all, those two spell schools were bundled together in TBC4 flasks. And I was going to say Resto Druids might want to consider this spell, but remember that spell power and healing power are different stats in vanilla, so Restoration would not be contributing much damage. And it's probably just downranking spells if they wanted to be efficient. Either way, Wrath should become your main filler spell, and you can use your mana bar on other things now as a boomkin. Next, Wild Strikes. Oh boy, so what this says is basically, while in Cat, Bear or Dire Bear form, Players within 20 yards in your party get Wind Fury, though Alliance just got Wind Fury, in other words. Feral Stonks just went through the roof. Feral will now be required for every melee group in PvE. Or will it just be Ferals picking up this rune? Will Resto Druids be expected to take this rune and hop into cat form and do a slash dance when there isn't much healing to do? Or do you just only ever bring Feral Druids now to raiding content? Hmm. Also, while this is strong, the way Horde applies Wind Fury is notably different and maybe advantageous. They can just have any shaman slam down a Wind Fury totem, and that's it, your Wind Fury's up for a period of time. This new version forces somebody to use a rune, which are all very powerful, and to be in a shapeshift form. Then again, from what I can tell, Wild Strikes is an aura type standard buff not a weapon buff, meaning you can put on sharpening stones and ferals themselves will benefit from wind fury. So maybe both factions want ferals now. I mean, hypothetically, if this was a weapon buff like wind fury is, you'd expect it to also be a periodic effect, which means your druids would be power shifting for wild strikes. And I don't know how I feel about that. This is definitely one of the more powerful runes from a utility point of view we will see in this season. I just hope it doesn't warp the whole druid class, 
perpetually on alliance around this one rune. The next one, Survival of the Fittest, is pretty simple. It might as well read, hey if you're a bear druid, you can now tank raid bosses. You also get a 20% flat damage reduction in bear, which is a huge amount. And as we will see later, druids are getting bonuses to their threat generation too. They also become crit immune in PvE, smoothing out damage intake by a lot. This was not possible in vanilla, and was one of the big issues that bear tanks faced. So get used to seeing a lot more than just warrior tanks in Season of Discovery, because this is just one of many improved tanking specs. Finally, for the chest runes, we have Living Seed, which is of course tailored towards Restoration Druids. You know, at first I was a bit skeptical about this, and I think it could be okay. It's just going to be very mana intensive. We'll see with the other Resto Druid focused runes that you're going to be getting some powerful heal over times, but this one wants you to care more about your casted spells. I'm assuming still no heal over time effects can crit or this would be crazy overpowered since it applies from any heal in the version that we are shown here. However, druids can spec into 50% plus crit chance on regrowth through talents, and the tier 2 5 set reduces the cast time of regrowth by 0.2 seconds. In fact, back in 2019 Classic, this tier set made regrowth healing a thing. I realise we're going to be level 25 on launch and we're a bit far off getting tier 2, but it was just a thought. Outside of the regrowth build, you aren't critting anywhere near enough without world buffs to make this seem useful to me, and assuming heal over time still cannot crit, as they could not in vanilla, this just seems okay. Next we have the runes for the leg slot. First up we have Savage Roar, the combo point spender from Wrath that makes your Feral Druid really start to do damage. You spend combo points to do 30% more physical damage and its duration scales with how many points you spend. For classic though, you might as well put an asterisk beneath this ability which says requires power shifting because energy regeneration in classic is static. It doesn't scale with haste effects, you don't have Berserk and Tiger's Fury doesn't give you energy, you just don't have extra resources available. I feel like Savage Roar is the first part of the puzzle for Ferals and a future rune will improve their energy regen, or just make more of it available. I mean it's still probably going to be better than your other finishing moves but it feels kind of clunky with where it is at the moment. Next up is a Life Bloom. This is the Wrath of the Lich King version, which, again, seems rather mana intensive for vanilla. It's an instant cast which can stack up to three times on a single target, and half the mana is refunded when the spell ends. It also reduces the global cooldown on rejuvenation and a Life Bloom too. This is a solid heal over time, front loaded mana cost though. I wonder if the last tick can crit in vanilla. I'm guessing it would still count as a periodic effect so the answer would be no, but if it did that would be great for living seed. I hope druids get more of a chance to heal over time, it's just healing in classic is very fast and reactive. You see a health bar dip and it's kind of like a race to see who can top it up first. On top of that there's only really a handful of fights where the raid is taking consistent damage. So maybe this is one you mainly keep rolling on the tanks, and the Warlocks when they're life tapping. Next is Skull Bash. Presumably this will be available in both bear and cat form. This is a mix of a gap closer and an interrupt that should be a powerful tool for druids of all specs in all areas of content. For the rune slot that it's in, it is more oriented towards bear, where it's like a second mini feral charge with a brief interrupt attached to it. This ability was introduced in Cataclysm, where originally it's interrupted for 5 seconds, before later being nerfed down to a 4 second lockout, so we are getting a more toned down version of it than that. Seems pretty good really, not much to add here. And for balance, you're getting one of the big iconic abilities that this specialization has, Star Surge. This is a big hard hitting spell with a short cooldown for Boomy, at least I'm presuming that's what it'll be. Notably here it does arcane damage, not spell storm as it does in Kata. Spellstorm just being arcane and nature together. Good for curse synergy, as we've already talked about though. It says it benefits from talents too, so this should include extra base damage, crit chance, spell cast time reduction, and crit damage. So if this thing hits you and crits, you should expect a good amount of your health bar to just evaporate. Definitely makes Boomy far more of a PvP threat, and it's just a fun extra button to press in PvE. Finally, we have the Glove Runes. Feral Druids will be getting Mangle, and this is a bit of a mix and match as to which version of Mangle it is. 
First up, it specifies that it will benefit from effects that trigger Claw or Maul. So I'm assuming this is Mangle for both Bear and Cat here. The one minute duration on bleed effects and bonuses to Shred was a Wrath of the Lich King change too, which was brought up from 12 seconds in TBC. But the normal damage modifier of 160% here was from TBC Mangle Cat. Mangle Bear in TBC had a damage modifier of 115%. Then again, Mangle has for a long time technically been two abilities balanced differently for Bear and Cat, though I'm not entirely sure what we are getting here. This does however fit the Feral DPS rune in the glove slot, the best out of all the abilities that are shown on this row. So maybe it is purely intended for them this time around, I guess we'll know for sure on launch. A restoration is a spell added in Wrath of the Lich King, Wild Growth. Instant heal over time that applies to several players, except it's been vanilla if I'd. In Wrath it's party or raid members, in Classic, very similar to TBC Circle of Healing, it's party only. You know, it took Blizzard nearly all of Wrath of the Lich King to change Wild Growth to where it prioritizes players over pets and guardians. Surely that won't happen again, right? All in all seems like a good heal on melees as you know they're going to be stacked, but it may be harder to use on more spread out ranged groups. Can I just say here, Resto Druids don't get Omen of Clarity passively in Classic, and even if you did spec into it, it doesn't prop from spell casts. These new heals seem good and everything, but I just don't know where the mana is coming from. Unless you do spec into Omen of Clarity, find the fastest melee weapon you can, and melee to fish for procs in between spell casts. This could actually be a thing, you know, I guess time will tell. As a flex pick, we have Sunfire. Now this is quite different from the spell you may know from later expansions. In Season of Discovery, it will be an extra damage over time effect that causes nature damage. It's not an AoE version of Moonfire. Also, Sunfire can be cast in bear form and in cat form too, where it will also grant a combo point, and it'll probably cost 45 energy or so. In the later expansions, Legion I think it was, Blizzard added Moonfire as castable in forms for druids, so it's kind of similar to that. This will probably be taken by boomies for the most part, even though damage over time effects tend not to be that great in classic as they don't crit or benefit from haste, boomkins will now have mana to spare. It could possibly have use in cat if the energy cost is very low, but that would mean not having mangle, so I doubt it. Now I'm starting to think that mangle may be cat only, you know, because after having read this version of lacerate that we're getting, it might as well be. Lacerate applies a bleed that stacks up to five times, and causes a high amount of threat. Okay, I'm pretty sure that in all group content you're going to have a feral because they can do wind fury, so that's got your bleed damage covered. But there is something even more interesting about this version of Lacerate. The bonus damage it deals is weapon damage. So this is the first time ever a feral specced druid has actually had to care about their weapon in vanilla. The whole manual crowd pummeler farming meta existed purely because Feral had no weapon damage scaling. Well, Burge, you're now off the hook and can proudly rock that warden staff as this. Assuming the warlock tanks don't take it, of course. Spoilers. Pat Druids though, back to Noma with you, at least for the time being. To be honest, I am thinking way ahead here though. We're going to be level 25 in Season of Discovery, for a good amount of time. Maybe the level 40 runes will change this whole format up once again, but that's the fun of the seasonal really, isn't it? So then, a few closing thoughts on each spec as they currently are. The most improved for me at this early stage has to be Moonkin. With a free damage dealing spell to cast, Star Surge and another damage over time effect, the Laser Chicken is really starting to cook. It's a shame that Curse of Shadows or Elements doesn't affect nature spells. I think this is a bit of an oversight in vanilla, but there is room to fix it this season. Next is the Burr Tank. Survival of the Fittest and Lacerate are both huge additions to get. However, there are no misdirection effects in Season of Discovery, yet at least, though Burrs will need a moment to ramp up their threat. But I think once you have your Lacerate stacks going, mobs are going to stick to you like a warrior with Thunder Fury. Their AoE threat is still practically non existent though, but for a main tank, berries are looking very solid. Next is Feral Cat. The fact that Alliance are getting Wind Fury is a big deal. The way it's applied may also make it of interest for Horde when it comes to min-maxing later on in the game too. Mangle is a good filler and a general damage tool, and as good as Savage Raw is, I think you need more things to generate combo points before that will really start scaling. Maybe I'm wrong on that one though. 
Then Restoration. Honestly, the healing additions seem good, they do. I've just no idea where you're going to get the mana needed to cast these spells. But you could very well be forced to essentially waste 11 talent points to get Omen of Clarity, and then have to stand in melee range attacking to make it work. But those are my current thoughts on the druid and the runes that we have available. A good start, I would say. We all know druids need some help. Either way, let me know your thoughts on the druid and the runes that they have received so far. Anything in particular you're looking forward to, do drop it down in the comments. And as always, thank you all so much for watching and listening in. And I'll see you all in the next one very soon.